I'm Scott Al Miller. This is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua, which celebrates 500 years on June 15th, and on the 16th begins the Ipico. But before we get into that, I was watching a new show that I really like, Near Shore Living. Go give them a uh, view after this video. Don't leave now. Watch this one first to the end, and then go watch that. I'll do my best to link it. But uh, watching that, he had some really great information about how people are making money on trying to sell passport schemes and plan B's and all these things. And it got me thinking there's some great information in there. I'm going to link that one down in the show notes. I'll try to put a link. Bing. I think it's right there. Uh, I'm sure I'll get that wrong. And uh, let's, let's get to that right after the bump. If you're talking to Americans and Canadians, you are often going to hear about their need for a plan B. And I'm not saying that the idea of a plan B is a bad one. We've got some videos about how to do some thinking about plan Bs for sure. But Nearshore Living had some really great points that hit home and I think his, his approach is really good. So he made the comments that everyone you're going to talk to, if you reach out to lawyers or relocation advisors or anybody like that, those you know, nomad financial advisors, any of them, they all make their money by selling you services for relocation, whether it's a new passport service or it's a residency service or it's a, uh, a right to relocate service or shipping service, no matter what it is, they all make their money by getting you to move forward with relocation and then capturing the what you're going to do once you begin the process or often even before you move and in some cases just real estate companies trying to sell you a house with you know at inflated prices or whatever so there's lots and lots of people with lots of different ways to make money but all of them make their money by convincing you that you need something that you may not need. Now, I'm not saying that relocation is a bad thing. I, of all people, love the idea of relocating and think for a lot more people than actually do it that it's probably the right answer. But I think people think about it wrong. They go to the wrong places. There's a lot of things that I think need to be adjusted. But I love the idea of relocation. I've done it myself and am absolutely thrilled. And I always have the possibility of moving back. And every day I choose not to. So obviously I am seeing my relocation as a successful venture. But what he was talking about was very specifically people who are looking for a second citizenship, but it's a subset of a greater problem. But his idea that all these people are looking for second citizenships to protect themselves from something, whether it's a tax regime, being drafted in the military, or who knows what, he made the point that rich people in countries generally don't have to worry about any of these things, and the poor have to worry about them whether they get a second passport or not. But in most cases, getting a second passport, while a very cool thing, if, you're a, if you have plenty of money and it doesn't matter, and you're able to just afford it, or if it's something you're just born with and you're able to get very easily or whatever, then fantastic. And for some people who have really weak passports, for example, I live in Nicaragua and a lot of Nicaraguans have significant problems traveling because their passport is so weak. So why they would want a second passport easy to understand. But for most people who are out there seeking a second passport, desperately looking for a place that's going to give them a second passport, it actually isn't going to give them any of the benefits that they think it's going to do. But it's going to cost them a lot of time and money to get there. And there is always someone who's looking to make a lot of money on the process who's going to try to convince you it's a thing you need to do. And by try to convince you, it could be they're making YouTube channels talking about it. They've got some informational websites that are going to lead you where, how to find, right? They don't even have to say you need a passport. They just make a site that's like, how how to get your plan B passport. I'm going to help you find the perfect place for a passport to make your life wonderful and all these things. And you don't realize that the trick is not in selling you the relocation service. It's in selling you on the idea of needing a passport in the first place. Along the same lines, a lot of people are sold on just the more general plan of a having a plan B and this, I think, is very similar. I think it's the same group of people. And in many cases, the idea of a plan B includes a passport. We hear this a lot from the people who are looking for early residency, feel like they need to do a lot of paperwork from abroad, are being pressured to buy houses early. They're all being told that these things are necessary to have safety in coming into Nicaragua or other places as well. But Nicaragua is what we see specifically. We constantly hear things like, well, if I don't have a house, are they going to give me residency? If I don't have residency, are they going to let me in at the border? All kinds of things that may sound like maybe they mean something, but when you really dig into what they mean, they mean nothing at all, right? Residency doesn't mean what people think it means. Residency doesn't give you some guarantee at the border that just being a tourist doesn't. There's all these things that are just misleading. You don't need a house for anything. It doesn't count towards anything. You don't need to be an investor. Those things aren't bad, right? But they're not doing the things that people think they're going to do. People are being misled because they're being 
hit with this emotional plea. You need a plan B. You got to protect yourself. Your main living situation is is bad. There's something wrong with it, and we gotta we gotta protect you from it, right? They create this fear and uncertainty and doubt, and the reaction is, oh no, there is something wrong. And of course, you know, if you're coming from North America, for example, there is a lot of stuff going on. There's political instability. There's fear of neighbors. There's huge inflation. There's housing crisis, right? There's a lot of different things that are happening. So it's easy to point to that and take media, right? CNN, Fox News, doesn't matter. Right side, left side, it's all the same, right? And say, look, they're, they're, they're panicking. Everyone's panicking, even though on the ground, it's really not that bad. It is not great, but it's not that bad, right? And you, you get this fear going, you get this panic going, and then you go, here's your solution, a plan B. Wow, what does that plan B include? Well, it includes paying me a lot of money. You're going to get a second passport. You're going to get a residency somewhere. We're going to set you up with a house. We're going to get you all this paperwork. We're going to make sure that you have a way to get out when the time comes. Well, let me tell you two important things. One, when the time comes, a plan B evaporates, right? If there's actually an emergency situation, and we've talked about this before, if there's actually an emergency situation, all those things, even the passport could evaporate. Now, the passport's very unlikely too, because that is an international legal status. So that would be an extreme case. That would be the one outlier if you actually have a passport. But what good does that passport do you? That's the real question. Even though, let's say you had a Panamanian passport. Let's say you're a Canadian and you get a Panamanian passport and something happens in Canada. I have no idea what would happen in Canada that makes you need a second passport. But let's just imagine there's some situation in Canada and, and you have to burn your Canadian passport and, and disavow the country and just completely vanish. What is that Panamanian passport going to do for you? Canada can still come after you and say, we don't recognize you burning of your passport. We don't recognize you giving up your citizenship. Or they can say, we don't even care. We're coming after you anyway. What, are the, what is Panama going to do to protect you? Right? What can Panama do to protect you? And unless you get to Panama, it's not going to do anything anyway. And if you do get to Panama, even if you don't have a passport and you're in a situation where you're being like forcibly taken back to your country for like torture or something, not something Canadians are known for, but we're just hypothesizing here then Panama still is going to recognize your, your pleas for asylum. The asylum plea is far more powerful than having a passport in most cases, especially if it's a secondary passport that you got through a golden passport program or whatever. I'm not saying the passports are bad. I'm saying that they don't, they don't represent what you think they represent. They don't give you unlimited separation from your original country. Now, if you're looking to switch passports, that will be a little bit different. If you can separate, but again, it's not a plan B. The, the, all of these, the things that actually matter is your plan A. That's what we want to talk about. Every time someone says, well, I need a plan B, I feel what I'm hearing is I need to fix my plan A, but I don't feel comfortable doing it. I'm not ready to make the leap. I'm not quite to a point where I'm ready to actually face what it means, what I've already decided is true. But here's the thing. A plan B means you're going to spend a lot of money, a lot of resources, a lot of mental energy, and you're going to make yourself crazy trying to find some way, and it doesn't exist, to create a living situation that you don't have, but that you can optionally leap into at a moment's notice. That's not a real thing in the world, right? If you're in the United States, you're in Canada, world falls apart, they close the borders, your passport to Panama means nothing. You're still going to be stuck in that country, especially since you're not allowed to fly out on a Panamanian visa. As long as you're in a pa passport, as long as you're in the U.S. or Canada or any country that you are a, a citizen of, you must use their paperwork. You must fly out on their passport. So if they're going to stop you at the border, they're stopping you either way. Your Panamanian passport won't come into play. So that's really important. Now, if you have to be in France and Canada closes the borders and you're like, okay, I just want to fly into Panama. Maybe it makes it slightly easier, but not really because you can fly to Panama from France anyway, right? If you're going to pass through Canada, you're screwed. If you're not, you were already okay. That's the thing is there's really no reasonable scenario where having that plan B actually enables your plan B any better than not having the plan B. If the world was to fall apart and I had to escape and I had to do all these things, I needed to get out of whatever country I'm in, I have the capability of doing that now. See my video on the power of being an expat. I'm already footloose and fancy free. I already have the mechanisms for moving to another country. I have my passports ready, all my documents ready. I am... I, you know, I don't want to move. I don't not doing these things because I want to be able to move at a moment's notice. But the nature of being an expat means I'm always capable of moving very quickly and experienced in doing so. Not that you can't be ready while living in your home country and not being an expat. That's an option too. But a lot of people who do that don't make themselves ready. They don't have their passports ready. They don't have their go bags. But you're 
capability of being locked inside your home country, while insanely unlikely, is still many times more likely than being locked in someone else's country, right? The possibility of being in a third party country and losing your right to leave that country approaches impossible because your home country has the right to repatriation and it would be an act of war to keep you as a prisoner inside another country. So that's generally not something anyone has ever in history considered doing. It's nonsensical. But your own country can certainly restrict its citizens from leaving the country. That is something that happens. Not often, extremely unlikely, a major step towards civil war, but it can happen. And that we have seen historically happen from very rare time to very rare time. So if just by being an expat, just by being outside of your home country, you have so much more visibility and freedom to protect yourself and so much more capability just from being an expat. But the power, all the things that a plan B sounds good for, these protections, these all these things, in a plan A, the key is there's benefits in the plan B. Why not take those benefits now? Why make them only a backup plan? Instead, if the place you're in is scary, if the place you're in is not as free, if the place you're in has high taxes and high inflation, any of those things that are leading you towards needing a plan B, instead of being ready to fix those problems, fix those problems. Make it a plan A. When you're doing all your research and you say, wow, in this example, Nicaragua has the weather I want, the freedoms I want, the cost of living I want. Wow, it's fantastic. I should be, that's my backup plan. Why is it a backup plan. Make it your primary plan. That's kind of the secret of life. Once you've identified that there's something better, do it. Don't wait on it. Don't let the fear of change be the thing that holds you back, right? If you're stuck in your home country that you're feeling afraid of, not so afraid that you like fear you have to escape right now, but you're feeling so much you're willing to start spending time and money and you know effort to try to have a, a backup plan to get out of, you're already putting, like, you got fear on your staying side, and now you have fear of change. Make the change. Make the leap, right? And then you get rid of that fear, and you get rid of this fear. Yeah, for a little bit, you got to go through this fear. You got to make the change. That's scary. It's always scary. But you get to that new country, you get to your plan, your new plan A, and suddenly, oh, oh, it wasn't scary. Oh, it is better. And you know what? What if it isn't? You know what? Okay, what if it isn't? That's a very real possibility. And tons of people have said, oh, if you leave your home country, you're going to be sorry. But let me tell you, that's a fear response because you're not going to be sorry, right? Let's say you're an American. You pack up today and you move to Nicaragua. Just examples. You're going to get to Nicaragua. One of two things is going to happen. You're going to love it. You're not going to love it. Those are the two choices. You may be, okay, you might be somewhere in the middle where you're kind of like, eh, but that's not loving it right? It's not, it's not not loving it, right? It's just not loving it. Fine. So either you love it and you stay and you're happy success, or you find out you don't love it. And then you can just go back to the United States. No harm, no foul. Or you can move on to another option, Guatemala, Argentina, Brazil, South Africa, wherever you think would be a good next choice to find out. In any case, you learned something important. You always have the ability to go back or to go on. No harm, no foul. The one thing that isn't really within the scope of possibility is being sorry. Now, if you move really stupidly, maybe you pack everything in a shipping container, you ship every single thing to the country, you spend every penny you have getting there, and you don't have any plan, no capability of coming back because you went all in, not just mentally, but like with like shipping containers and bank accounts and things that we constantly tell people not to do. Yeah, you could end up sorry because you burned your bridges in some financial way that makes real big problems. Don't do that. You still use common sense, move in sensible ways. But as long as you're moving sensibly, as long as you're doing the things that we say, you have no risk. You're not paying anyone or barely anything. Right, of course, there's a flight, there's a you know hotel, whatever. But you're talking really small amounts of money, really small compared to plan being things. And that idea that you're going to be sorry. How could I be sorry? It's an extended vacation. I did it for two weeks. I didn't like it. I did it for two months. I didn't like it. I did it for two years. And eventually, I didn't like it. And now I can go back. At least you're going to go back a little bit wiser, a little bit more worldly, a little bit more information, or you're going to have more information about where to go on to. It doesn't matter. You're in a better position. So you have these safeties that it, you don't feel like they're there. And people don't want you to realize they're there. They want you to be scared, right? People who are Get, they're on the dole. They're making money off of your taxes. They're scared that you're going to leave and they're going to have a tougher time. Too bad. That's their issue. They could move on too, right? That's not your 
job to have to make your life unhappy to support other people. Now, I realize some people have some really tough things they have to deal with. Like, well, my family is here and they don't want to go on, but you know what? They're the ones who don't want to go on. You can go on first. You can be the vanguard. Go to the new place. Hey, family, it's safer. It's cheaper. This is a better plan A. I'm seeing it firsthand. If they don't want to follow you, it's who's the one not sticking together, right? The person who's improving things and trying to do the right thing for the family or those that are just living in fear and don't want to improve things. Now, I understand it's more complex than that, but the idea that families have to all live in one place, even within countries, we don't get that, right? When I lived in the United States, I had to live really far away from my family most of the, most of the time. Now, a lot of them moved. We ended up closer to each other at some point. But even when we were close together, we were no closer than we are now from Nicaragua. I can get cheaper, easier to see most of my family from Nicaragua than I could just flying around the United States. And so, yeah, I realize that from Canada to Nicaragua, as a specific example, is more difficult than most flying around Canada. But even flying around Canada isn't that easy. And being able to just dictate that you're never going to leave your hometown, not that easy if you want a career. Now, of course, if you're going to work online, you can work online in your hometown or you can work online in Nicaragua, but it takes so, so much more money to be able to work online successfully from Canada than it does from Nicaragua, as examples. In all these cases, you have to evaluate the big picture and look at it logically because having a plan B, yeah, just an idea of a plan B. Well, I think I like Argentina. If things go south here, pfft, I'm heading south, right? Okay, that's a reasonable plan B. Like you just know who's likely to take you, who's likely to work out well for you, who likely you're going to like, perfect. But doing a bunch of plan B, like I'm gonna get a passport, I'm gonna buy a house, I'm gonna, no. If you're not gonna use them, then don't even think about that. That is such a bad plan. But either have just a loose idea of knowing what to do, do your research, and that's like channels like this. We're great, just learn more about places, have a bunch of built up knowledge. Knowledge is always empowering. But if you actually find that there's a place that is actually good, you have already decided, you've already acknowledged that's your better plan A, you're living your plan B, get out of it, make your plan B, your action plan, make it happen today. That is the thing that's going to protect you. That is the thing that is going to improve your life. Don't make it a fear response to where you are going into a plan B because things have gone so far wrong that you have to. Make your plan A an intentional decision to make your life better and also protect you from the need to have a plan B. That is where the power is, that's where the success is, and that's what I hope for you guys. That's what my family did. Yeah, we put in a lot of years of research, we actioned our plan A, and now we live in paradise. We are safer than we ever were, we're happier than we ever were, we're healthier than we ever were. It is a really great, now this is the solution for us. Nicaragua was right for us, that doesn't mean it's right for you, but the idea of finding your right plan A is right for you. Thanks for joining me. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, do all the things like subscribe, share, someone tell things. I'll see all of you tomorrow. And as always, hit one of these things on. We've got one up here, one over here, one down here, one down here. See all these little videos? They're really cool. One of them should pique your interest. If one of them doesn't scroll down, find a video that does. Thanks. I'll see you tomorrow.